Hello, sorry for a little bit of a my account and I'm not sure why and uh, the app is acting super goofy and screwy in fact let me show you what the app is doing that is my app right now so I then tried to log in um, tried to log in uh, with, with not in the app and just in the browser and that's not seeming to work either. So the bottom line is we're going to do this anyway. And because it seems like from my phone, the broadcast is going okay, but what will not, what I will not be able to do unless this gets figured out here in the next 10 seconds is see your comments. So I apologize about that. I don't know why I've tried, uh, I've tried all kinds of things. So I'm not really sure. Oh, I think I may have found you. Oh, gosh. Hmm. Even the app is not working, or even the browser version is not working very well. So anyway, that's enough of that. How are you guys? So just so you know, as a reminder, I can't see your comments. Uh, I'm not really sure why. In fact, it's showing up in Spanish. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on, y'all. All right, so this demo is for gloss sprays. Now, I, I hear a lot of, com and I've done a few gloss spray demos already. Um, I've heard a lot of comments in the past about how frustrating it is when they clog, and I agree. It is frustrating when they clog. clog. And I think that the best prevention for um, clogging is that you use them a lot. You know, and I would always start by saying, um, to everybody, you know, you've got to, let me just reboot my iPad. Um, you've got to, uh, we'll, do, we'll, we'll handle that later. Uh, you've got to, you know, keep the lids on. And I do think keeping the lids on does help them from clogging. But the bottom line is this is, this product is really a really unique acrylic. And the more that you, or the more it sits, Okay, so the more that it's sitting in those feed tubes, um, the, the more likely it will be to, to dry up a little bit. I have heard reports of people soaking their sprayers in hot water and or even and or even rubbing alcohol and having success on clogging them. Um, bottom line is use them a lot and you shouldn't have clog issues. The other reason um, that I wanted to do this demo though is that I always tell my supporters and my fans and my friends that the number one way that I use these sprays is not by spraying. In fact, I very, I don't wanna say rarely, Let's see, out of 100% of, of, of use of the sprays, I would say I spray them 20% of the time and 80% of the time I'm just making a hot mess with them. So again, if you're just joining me, my Facebook app is super goofy and for some reason I'm not able to see comments. So this is just going to be me blabbing incessantly <laughs> and I will try to come back in a bit and see comments and I, I, I apologize about that. I, I do not know what's going on with my, with my iPad. All right, so 80% of the time, I just make a hot mess with these in other ways. So I, th I thought I would show you some of my absolute favorite ways. I didn't clean my glass mat because this is just gonna make a bit of a mess <laughs> anyway. So I thought, eh, why bother? Now what's so fun about the gloss, about the spray inside the bottles, it's almost like we shouldn't have called it spray. You know, they're kind of like an acrylic ink. It, it, um, except they're not an ink, really. They're, they're, they really are an incredibly unique product. They're acrylic-based, they're very thin and fluid, um, and they dry glossy, and then they resist each other after a while. And they're just, I just love them. I'm slightly obsessed, I don't know if you can tell. So I'm going to pour out a little bit of the spray onto my glass mat palette thingy here. I'm sure there's a word for it, but you know, I'm Dina. <laughs> I'm the least professional of the bunch. Everybody else is so polished and professional. And then there's me. <laughs> okay. So that was Ruby. That's turquoise. 
This is going to be sky. So the, the four new colors that just came out are ruby sky, blackberry, and why can't I remember? Tangerine. Tangerine, tangerine, tangerine is the best. Let's pour some tangerine out too. Now blue and orange make brown. <laughs> So, you know, just got to keep that in mind. All right. So don't be afraid to use these like paint. Don't be afraid to stick a paintbrush in them. Don't be afraid to pour them out, put them on your palette. If the runniness of it bothers you, you can get one of those palettes that has just the little wells, more like a watercolor palette. But one of my favorite things to do is to paint with these. Now, why not just water down paint or use watercolor? You can, but this will have a different uh, feel at the end of it. Um, this will dry differently. It will dry, it will have a different quality about it. It, it. it will still resist. So here you'll see little paintings that I did. And then I'll show you how I did those right now with the gloss sprays. And, you know, it just, it has its own look. So it's kind of like, why wear red? Why wear blue? Well, because you want a certain look. That's why you use the gloss spray. You want a certain look and you want to play with the properties of it. So load up some of the gloss spray right on a, a paintbrush. And yes, it will come out of your paintbrushes. It truly will. I'm going to make this. Is, these are inspired by Lotta Jan's daughter. She's the Swiss or not Swiss, Swedish um, fabric designer uh, who makes really cool quilting fabric and patterns and all kinds of cool stuff. So this did not come out of my own head. Again, I'm giving a lot of Jan's daughter the credit. I can't do them quite as well as she can. But the reason I like these is that it just shows you how incredibly easy it is to do something cool with your gloss spray. So again, if you're just joining, I can't see comments because of some technical issues with my iPad. It's like blipping funny. And I need to figure out how to restart it. So all right, so now that I did a little line, I'm just picking up the gloss spray and flattening the brush, making essentially a little blob. These are a lot of Jan's daughter inspired botanicals. Hers look way better, <laughs> I will say. All right, I'm gonna dip that brush in the water. I'm gonna pick up maybe some turquoise. I'm just gonna drop some turquoise spray right into the puddle, and let it work its magic. Could have, could have done some red. Red and blue make purple. You just want to do colors that won't turn brown. And, you know, I, if you're new to me, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're not new to me, you know that uh, I'm, I like spills and mess, and I like it when it gets goofy and, and unexpected things happen, and and it moves in ways I don't expect. It to me that's. That's part of my very organic process. And the, the gloss sprays really lend themselves really well to that process. So I'm gonna let that dry. Um, I could blot it, but why? Because I want it to dry just exactly like that. So I'm gonna, well, yeah, I'm gonna let, move that one aside. Now, what's awesome about the gloss spray is that when, they're, when they dry, they're permanent. So you're not gonna get any um, of that really cool ghosting that you can get with distress or dilutions. Um, I thought, why do I need a product that ghosts? Their products are perfect. And I wanted a product that I could paint over and not have any bleed through. So when these are dry, they are good and dry, my friend. Or they are good and permanent. There's, in fact, they will never wash out of your jeans. <laughs> your carpet. If you get it on something um, like your cell phone, not that I would. <laughs> uh, no, constantly. Uh, or uh, my TV screen you can uh, uh, just use an alcohol wipe and get it off. So it cleans up like acrylic paint does, but when it's dry, it's, it's permanent stuff, okay? So here, here's another thing that I like to do. I'm gonna take the paintbrush, this is the round that's in the four brush set, and I'm gonna start um, with a, a thin line, I'm gonna press it down for a fat line, and then I'm just gonna draw down and I essentially end up with these little, almost like blades of grass. So 
So you're playing, you know, all your watercolor techniques will kind of work. I mean, you can't re-wet and you can't uh, get those sorts of looks. But as far as brushwork, you know, how you're going to move your brush around, you certainly can get, you know, use the same kind of brushwork. These tags are not gessoed. Um, gesso is plastic, and so and, and the acrylic um, spray, the gloss spray is plastic. So sometimes I do spray them over gesso, um, but the gesso will even start to bead up the gloss spray a little bit. So you know I would say gloss spray optional, or excuse me, gesso optional. What you're going to have to do is, depending on the look that you want, you're going to want to gesso or not or use gesso as even kind of a resist. So I, I, I find that most of the time, if I'm starting with gloss spray, I don't start with a gesso layer. But that's just me. I'm sure you'll find some other artists out there that use these um, and that always gesso. And that might seem sacrilege coming out of my mouth since you guys know how much I love. I love gesso because I do love it an immense amount, right? Um, but gesso for me is dependent on the product and you know the technique that I want to use and I like the way acrylic paint acts on gesso best so most of the time if I'm going to start with acrylic I'll gesso but um, even though this is acrylic it's just such a different beast you guys it's so hard to explain if you haven't if you haven't used it oops let's add a little water to that I think I let that dry a little, a little tad too much I'm just trying to drop a little ruby into those puddles, but the puddles are, here in Arizona, we're so warm already, so puddles are drying. I think I never let an oops, oh well, um, derail me. <laughs> Some of my best stuff comes out of like, oh, well, I didn't mean for that to happen, but yeah, cool. Remember, lower your standards for your art, and you'll, you'll like it so much better. All right, let's pour out some blackberry. Blackberry. I sing. Now, it's so weird not to be able to see your comments. I'm so sorry. So sorry about that. If you weren't here at the beginning, what happened was when I go to my app, it, it, it is a, uh, it's like flashing weird. And then I tried to log in on my, through a browser and it first, it made me want to generate a code. And so then I did that. And then, um, it, it's, it would pull up the page, but it wouldn't show the video. Okay, what did I do there? That one's going to have to be really fast. Oops, oh well. So that's kind of a fun little freeform painting. Of course you can paint, um, let me go back to this one. Of course you can paint your, uh, what am I trying to say? Your stamped images as well. This is still really puddly. Um, I, I want to kind of move the phone so I can kind of see what, see you. But last time I was teaching and I touched my phone, I managed to call 911. <laughs> and I hung up and then they called me back and it was so immensely embarrassing. And that was during a live class. So I'm not going to mess with my phone. <laughs> Not gonna mess with my phone, y'all. Oh my gosh. Funny. So you can just get such interesting paintings with that fluidity. Oh, cool. That I'm gonna just let that run. Nice. Okay. So let me grab my. This is my one of my white journals. And somewhere also. Here it is. So here's a craft journal. And these are those little fronds that you just saw me paint. So how I did this was, on, you know, remember on the craft that the gloss sprays soak in and then the craft is going to change their color. So I find on the craft you either have to do several layers of gloss spray um, and then it will start to be vibrant or paint over acrylic paint. So for example here, I already have some gesso and it doesn't even have to be gesso, it can be any color of acrylic paint. Um, 
my gloss spray will show up awesome on top of this and I'll still get that the cool look of the craft in the background. You'll see when it dries here, down here. Can you see the difference of how it soaks into that unprimed, very absorbent craft? So I do use gloss spray in, in my craft journal a lot, but this is a time when I'll have an acrylic or a gesso foundation. Just because the color and the absor absorbency of that craft page is going to change the color. Um, and it's, it's just going to mute it out, OK? Whereas it looks, it looks cool on, on an acrylic foundation there. And then here, so that's, sorry, I don't know if attention deficit, oh, scroll. I'm all rattled because of my, my technical issues. So this, that's how this was done. So I already had um, some paint on there. And then I just used the brush to do the little frondy things right on top. And then these, <laughs> Um, I just did straight on the page. I'll show you this in one second. So, dipping it in the spray. Let's, let's do that. I'm going to pull a skinnier brush. So this tiny, really tiny detail brush comes in that four set and the set of four. And this, it works really well when you want this, a finer line. I love the gloss spray just directly on these pages. It makes me so happy. You guys all know that I love to speckle with the spray, so we call it the pox, P-O-X. So I'll just flick the stem or a paintbrush over and it just makes for awesome, awesome colors. The other thing that I will very, very often do in these journals is uh, pour. <laughs> now, if you've been following me for any amount of time, you've seen me do this many times where I just open the spray and let it rip. Now, if you don't want this really free, uncontrolled experience, um, you can always drop it with a pipette. I'm swimming in spray over here. But this it's very common. Uh, if you watch any of my videos, you've seen me just open them up. And then people will always say, you still have a gloss spray right there open. It's like they know me. It's like they know that I'm going to end up spilling it, which I regular, yes, I regularly do. Is it driving you nuts that I'm putting the journal in that palette? Oh, Dina. Too fun. And so these are sort of washy backgrounds that I will then come back to and create over. And I do this all the time. In fact, these sorts of colored backgrounds are one of the main, I'm just going to set that aside to dry, are one of the main things that I do. And this right here, and I have demoed this before, I know. But I love to have random layers of gloss spray on my palette, on my glass mat. And then I just see what happens when I press tags or other substrates in there. Maybe I should put the lid back on that. And that's probably why, I mean, look at the, look at this bottle. This bottle is not a bottle that has been sprayed very often. <laughs> this is a bottle that has been poured constantly um, because it just, it just makes me so happy. So let me just mop some of this up. Hold on one second. Then I'll show. Then I'm going to show you what I'll do with these. I have like a million. I have colors that are turning muddy because purple and orange will turn a little muddy. And then I say, hmm, okay, I've got muddy colors. Oh well. Now, once let me just wipe that down. 
somebody might want to hit screen record because I hardly ever wipe stuff down. <laughs> okay, so now that I have the, the sort of these hot messes of colors happening, I like to add a neutral. And sticking with the gloss spray feel, I'm going to pour white on there. Okay. So this is my white spray. And yes, I do this while all of it's wet. I often use the stems. You're going to get a different sort of join from layer to layer. Oh, okay. I'm in love with that. I'm in love with it. Um, people always are like, Oh, you like everything you do. Yeah, just lower your standards. It's so much more fun when you make art. Have really low art standards, high moral standards, and life will be perfectly... Well, it won't be perfect, but you'll have a lot more fun making your art. I will tell you that. I think the vast majority of my gloss spray use is just pouring them out. And I know that's ridiculous. In fact, um, when I had a meeting with Ranger recently, I was like, okay, I like the sprays. And no, I love the sprays. I love them. I said, but I don't spray them that often. So can we get this? And can we get this? And can we get this? Like other, other kind of funky methods to apply it because it, this to me is so incredibly exciting. I'm going to drop a little bit more um, color into that white. Just see what happens. It's not quite like pouring. So if it, you might think, oh, this is like pouring. Not quite. It, it's not going to have the same qualities of a pour. Um, you, can, you can mix gloss spray with your pouring medium, though. You can pour with it. But the pouring medium is really what makes the cells. So you're not going to get cells um, and things like that. But you are going to get a very interesting color field type background happening and I do this all the time now sometimes I think well this this is a lot right it's really messy and lately I've been kind of into some more minimal I'm just in love with this one y'all that this one's Arizona on a tag it truly is red rocks blue sky okay most of the time even though I, I just said I pour most of the time, I pour um, a little bit more controlled with white space. So I, oh look, there's a person there. We can turn that into a person here in just one second. So I'll start with one little layer. I'll add a second little layer. I'll add white. And yes, I really do add white quite a bit. And then I let it be because I like my white space up and down the tag. So again, let's start with some tangerine. I'll start with one little bit. I'll start with a, a second color. Think of it in a, thir in, in a step, three step process. And then I will add one more color. And usually that's white. Okay, and then I will let that be as well. So, you know, if you think, oh, this is crazy messy, yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Recently I was experimenting and I thought, oh, you know, other ways to apply gloss spray. And I came across a product called a ruling pen. And a ruling pen is a old drafts, drafts person, draftsman's tool, um, mostly kind of used in architecture. But what's kind of cool about the ruling pen is that it's essentially like a quill, like a fountain pen. Um, but because these are cheap and you're not you're not ruining your um, expensive nibs, um, 
for me this was a better option because these aren't these are like a couple bucks each and what I enjoyed about this is that you can and there's a learning curve it's not super easy in the end I will tell you these were made for drawing straight lines they weren't really made for anything other than a ruler and a straight line but what happens is a little bit of your medium in this case gloss spray it's it gets held in the gap between those two metal pieces and you can adjust how wide with this little screw and I found that I could not draw apparently I find that no matter what you have to start it on a piece of paper there we go I found that I could write well the learning curve for this I, th I thought was not the most fun okay and it, you know and it, you do get the, you do get a cool look that you like but it, but it's kind of a lot of work and then and then the thought came to me hold on <laughs> I wonder if my fine line tip applicator so these are made to screw onto the paint uh, bottles like this the black ones are made to go on the retired paint tubes so if you have the black fine line tips they won't work for this um, you want the one that has it's white and pink these are made to go on this bottle and you can draw with your paint and do you know have really precise applications I, I thought does this work on the gloss spray and to my extreme happiness the answer is yes so take your sprayer out this becomes your new lid and then you separate the white from the pink the pink stays on there and then you now have a fine line tip applicator and then I thought I wonder if they clog so I've left mine for quite a while I do think some of the spray in there gets a little drier but I've never had one clog, clog completely yet because the, the needle in the lid threads into the needle in the applicator and I can totally uh, draw with it no matter what and write and scribble and outline and you know now unfortunately this this needle is, is just a tad too um, big for a line that's that's incredibly fine okay so because the gloss spray is really really fluid what's going to happen is it's going to come out fairly quickly so you have to move your hand fast and you have to um, you know it's kind of, there's a little bit of a learning curve for how to use the fine line tips but but a lot smaller learning curve than the ruling pen um, and I talked to Ranger about oh, wouldn't it be so cool sometime to get this for the gloss spray in a finer in a finer needle tip and blah 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 so who knows what will happen in the future we're gonna work on all of it but I what I've been using this for a lot is more goofy lines <laughs> I'm, I'm drowning here in gloss spray y'all see why I didn't clean my uh, my gloss mat anyway so you can outline write text you're not gonna get like awesome journaling in the sense that you know writing letters and really good legible text you're just not it's just one of those another kind of uh, very organic methods now because I've been scraping it down here this doesn't want to come out anymore because what I've done is I picked up enough of the product enough of the medium that's on the tag and I've gunked up this tip it's not gunked up, up down in the needle it's gunked up at the tip so I just um, open it again like hello I'm still here sorry I gunked you up and then I'm back in business so I just stuck the needle back in cleared out the gunk that I've been scraping up because I when I use this I touch this needle all the way to the paper and I press I kind of put some pressure on it I, I do press it a little bit um, because I want to I, don't know, I, I just feel like I can control it better so this one here I'm going to outline it with, this is my prototype bottle of Ruby 
I've been doing a lot of sketching with these bottles. If you follow me on Instagram, I posted a couple things where I've sketched with these bottles and they just make me so happy. So this one here is sketched with this bottle. And you know, you can sketch, let it dry. You can paint before or after, right? Because this is permanent when it's dry. So you can paint around it. You know, people say, where do you get the fine line tips? Um, they're, they're available through Ranger. So you ask your, the store. See, the stores that you buy your stuff from may have them, actually. You just didn't realize what they were or have a need for them. But to me, this exponentially extends the use of your gloss spray, and it's one of my current sort of obsessions. It just makes me really happy. Happy, happy, happy. Happy, happy, happy. Come back to the craft journal. Okay. I do hope I can find the lid I just took off that. Oh, Dina, have mercy, woman. Why are you such a hot mess? I do not know. Oh, there it is. Sometimes I need a magnifying glass to thread the needle back in the needle. But this, so this is Heather spray. And I really, I've really been into the pastel sprays again lately. I feel like sometimes they get forgotten. And I like combining them in unusual ways with the other colors. Do these need to be outlined? Of course not. But just, it's just another fun thing to try. beans. Just fun to mess around with. Hey, look, I put the lid right back on. Are you shocked? I know. You might need to make note of the date. It's almost a Christmas miracle in May. All right, so let me grab one of these kooky backgrounds, and I'll just show you. So the, they're not dry. They're not even close to being dry. But I'll show you what I would do with one of them. So now I've got pretty intense background happening there, right? So I know that what I put on top of it needs to be bold and needs to stand out. Just wondering if I already have a tiny attacher out. Yep, I do. You don't need a staple, you can adhere things however you prefer. I, I tend to be, I don't want to say lazy, I, uh, because I don't think I'm lazy. I think I'm, I think I'm impatient. <laughs> and I just think sometimes I'm like, I really want that to, I want that to adhere right now, right now. I have some stamped images here. I think I'll use this big face. Lately I've been into using these large faces, but only half of them at a time. So like let's, yeah, let's use half, let's cut it. I like the, the bold black and white next to all that color. Oop, out of staples next to all that color. It just makes me happy. And it, it provides enough contrast to stand up against 
the craziness of the background that's there. Do we want both of them? Mm -hmm. Kind of light. Maybe. maybe not. We'll just do one. Cutting out an image. I should be like Diane, who, who pre-cuts everything. And I think that is so smart. I do pre-stamp stuff, but I'm not that great at pre-cutting, I will say. I should be, but I'm not. So this tag is really wet. I would totally write on it with paint pens. I think that would be awesome. And then what do you do with tags? The answer is yes. So I'm just sticking a brush in the gloss spray, using it to paint stamped images. Let's speckle as well. A little bit of pox. And you've got this vibrant, colorful tag. So I've been, I've been, um, I've been typing with one of my many typewriters I've been uh, collecting. So typing on um, the pre-done backgrounds that are in the Dilutions, um, what do you call it, diary? Yeah. Because I started one of those ones and then just like I always do, I never, uh, I'm not, oh, oh shoot, I cut the tea off. Um, I'm just not very, I'm not a great finisher. I've always had great intentions, but anyway. And so it's partly full and then I had some that were not full. And now that I'm really into this typewriting, I thought, oh, you know what would be great? is to type already on the backgrounds because they're so good and the, and the, the paper in the Dilution's journals is so good. So I've been doing that with my half done journal. Because I figure if I want to do another one, I know who to get it from. The lovely, amazing Diane. But the, the backgrounds are so great, and they're perfect. i got to staple that tee on separately, y'all, because I managed to be crazy with my scissors. I could just glue this um, as well instead of staple it, but say la vie. So this is a Gabriel Garcia Marquez um, quote. The spirit of her invincible heart guided her through the shadows. If you haven't read uh, A Hundred Years of Solitude, it is an amazing book. Oops. I now own six typewriters because I'm just that crazy. All right. So there's a little quick tag done with one of those delicious gloss spray backgrounds. If you page through a lot of my journal work, you'll see gloss spray everywhere and very rarely sprayed. Most of the time poured. So even this craft journal that I've been working in, this started with a a layer of carnation paint because remember I said the gloss spray is more vibrant on acrylic in the craft and then this is an acrylic this is a gloss spray pour so it looks like I poured a little bit of night and turquoise lemon and magenta so that was poured right over and then let dry and I, I just I do use it all the time this is gloss spray background here this is a gloss spray background here. Um, gloss spray here. Okay, so some acrylic paint down on the pages and then some gloss spray, either brushed on. The large brushes, the brushes that are really um, big and chubby. Oh, see, look at that. That's perfect to now create on. Um, the brushes that are large and chubby, like these big ones that came out, um, they are wonderful for just brushing on a gloss spray color here and there. So again, pour it out or put it in a palette or whatever floats your boat. 
and apply it with the brush, the stem. If you want to be a little more controlled, you can always, always brush, brush these on. So there, now I've got a simple background, so quick and ready, instant gratification almost, for the next step. Sometimes I'll go through and I'll do that on every single page in the journal. This was gloss spray mixed with a little bit of gesso here, because I had a ton of it on my palette. More gloss spray. This was just acrylic, I believe. This is gloss spray on the... Chipboard piece. This is gloss spray painting again. And then this also is gloss spray back here. So I hope that made sense. I hope that gave you a few extra ideas. If, you're, if your gloss sprays are frustrating you, I really don't want you to throw them away. I hear people say, I'm going to toss them. No! Don't toss them. Don't toss them. Don't toss them. Um, use them a lot. That that will that's your best prevention of clogs. But come back to this video and try some of the fun and funky painting, freeform painting, coloring stamped images, pouring, making cool backgrounds. Don't don't throw them away because you know you may end up with something delicious like this. Isn't that cool? All right, I'm going to see if I can open you one more time, see if by some miracle Facebook has resolved itself for me. It has not. All right, so I'm going to grab my phone, and I am going to flip it around to see you. Hey, everyone. All right, so now let me see. I'll be looking, so I'll be able to see comments here for a second because I'm watching you. Any questions that you had while I was demoing? Um... I hope I hope it made. I feel like I was super rattled because of my tech issues, um, so I, I apologize about that. <laughs> Cover the blue. Oh yeah, look there it is. Thank you. That's hilarious. I would not even have noticed that. <laughs> Thanks. Any other? Just let me know if you've got questions, but please don't toss your gloss sprays if they're clogged. Don't do it. They're perfect, amazing, unique, fascinating medium that I find that I use constantly, constantly, constantly. So have, have fun and make sure that you hashtag Dina Wakely Media and post what you're doing. you make it look easy yeah dolly i i've just done it a lot and i also know that everything can be recovered from so we're you know just remember that it it's just paper it's just paper right captain hot spill <laughs> yeah um so go back in the demos as well that i did um when covid first started i know that there's a couple of gloss spray demos in there so go find those. There's also a class, there's also a, uh, like a, a paid Facebook class as well. I know the fine line applicators are, they were, they were a game changer for me. Um, yes, yeah, so it needs to be the pink fine line. This one. But yeah, that, that, realizing that, playing, playing with that um, ruling pen, because it, it was fun. And, but again, it's a lot more finicky than just the fine line tip. And it, it was so funny when I'm like, huh, I wonder if those fit on the bottles. Ah! So, super fun. What? Now, now you know why I didn't clean. <laughs> of course, you guys always know I don't clean. So, thank you guys. Appreciate you. Email me if you have questions and use your sprays. Use them. Use them, use them, use them. Right. Bye, everybody.